Hello, mate. Hello, mate. How you doing? Oh, I'm pretty good myself. Uh, oh, what about you, mate? Oh, I'm oh, I'm pretty good. Oh, I just got a got a new PC, mate. Oh, it's it's, it's sick. It's uh, got got all the latest tech on it, mate. It's got a 40, 4070 and all that hot business, mate. Oh, sick. What are you gonna do with it, mate? Oh, I'm probably gonna make some uh, cool videos with it, mate. I'm gonna do this uh, F1 2020 mod. Uh, on my PC when I get it, and it should be pretty sick. Uh, so like, I've gone to reinstall the game and the mod, hey, and uh, the 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 save file corrupted. F Hello, everybody, and well, yeah, welcome back. Uh, and I should say, I'm back. Hi. Um, yeah, I know, I know what you're all gonna say. I know it's been. Too long, admittedly, yeah, um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, unfortunately, yeah, the save file went kaput, so we're starting again, because why not? Um, I thought it'd be better to start again than to just not do it entirely, because I think you'll all agree that that series is actually oddly quite fun, and, you know, obviously there's limitations to Geki's mod, but... He's doing the absolute best he can, uh, given how much of a pain in the butt this game can be to mod. So, yeah, he's doing the best he can. But with this new series, we're obviously not going to choose the same team that we did uh, in the last one. And we've got with Sauber, uh, because I kind of feel they're in the same ballpark as Benetton. And uh, that's the provisional calendar. And this is the settings we're going to be using for this season. We might um, adjust the driver difficulty level every now and then. Uh, just for different races. Because obviously the AI are pretty inconsistent over the <laughs> entire season. Um, and as you're about to see. Um, in the next race yeah, they're um, interesting. Uh, very, very interesting. <laughs> but uh, we're just uh, getting everything set up uh, at the moment, just going through all the perks and blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. All the boring career mode stuff that uh, you kind of have to go through for the first 10 minutes when you're starting a new career mode. And uh, honestly, I don't know how long we're going to stay at Sauber 4. Uh, but uh, of course, we'll just wait and see how the rest of this uh, season turns out for us and uh, if we get any good opportunity to move to a different team and of course we have to think ahead to 1999 and into the 2000s as well at some point but for this season we're going to focus on what we're doing here at Sauber of course we have Jean Lacey as our teammate who I definitely think is going to give us a run for our money he is one of the more underrated F1 drivers during the 90s he definitely could have been a force to be reckoned with, but kind of just made all the wrong career choices, didn't he? So, yeah, kind of like Fernando Alonso, oddly enough. But, uh, yeah, either way, we're just uh, getting some upgrades on the car as well because the Sauber's kind of, at the start of this season, it's sort of towards the higher end of the field. It's kind of the best of the rest. I believe in real life they qualified, I think, fifth. Uh, behind uh, the two McLarens and Michael Schumacher. I don't know who qualified fourth. I know it wasn't Irvine because Irvine was really bad during 1998. <laughs> so, yeah, here's the car reveal. And I must say, she is looking mighty fine. I do really like the uh, Sauber liveries from back in the day. I don't know about you guys, but uh, especially from the livery that we saw yesterday. Uh, interesting. Very, very interesting new livery for Stake F1 team. Uh, let me know what you guys think of their brand new bright green livery. I'm mixed on it. I like the front of the car. But I think the side profile is absolute trash, and I think there just is too much black. And they should have just gone all out. Uh, that's just my opinion. But, um, yeah, it looks like this year is going to be another livery just boringness from, from F1, which is kind of a shame. Uh, compared to these 90s cars and early 2000s where they were so 
every car had a good livery, pretty much. There were a couple stinkers, but... I mean, go back and look at this era of F1, and you will find no ugly liveries. They are all absolutely fantastic, and that's... Uh, Really what we've been missing in Formula 1. And um, I guess the only thing to complain about about these cars is the groove tyres. Which um, was an interesting choice, uh, to say the least, from Max Mosley back in the day. And uh, again, as you're about to find out, uh, they handle pr pretty badly uh, in, in race. So, yeah. But um, we're going to jump into our qualifying session. And some of you will be glad to know that uh, for this season, we have gone with one-shot qualifying. Uh, because last season it caused just chaos most of the time. <laughs> and uh, I think we had, what was it, Mark Genet up into like second uh, in, in one race. So yeah, we, we definitely do not want a repeat of that anytime soon. And uh, hopefully have a bit of normal qualifying for, for once, but... We are going to go with an increased downforce setup because, once again, being towards the sort of lower half of the grid, um, I feel like this car definitely needs a bit more downforce. We're going to be slower than the top three teams anyway, that being Williams, McLaren and Ferrari, so we may as well just make the car a bit more controllable. And bumping the PSI all the way down because why wouldn't you do that? need as much traction from these tyres as we can and shoving the ballast forward, so... We just have a little bit more stability at the rear. But here is going to be our first qualifying lap of the season. No pressure whatsoever heading down into turn one. One of the most difficult corners on the entire track. Can use a little bit of the track on the left as um, we have uh, enabled a bit more freedom with the track limits as well. We're down into this next hairpin. Of course, this is where Martin Brundle uh, tore his car in half in 1996. Heading into this middle part of the first sector as well. This is um, this corner is just about flat, but I hadn't discovered that yet. But I do during the race. This next corner, a little bit awkward. It's a lot sharper than you'd think, especially in these cars where they don't turn nearly as well as the modern Formula 1 cars. And of course, this is the old section now. This has been changed uh, ever since 2022. And... I gotta say, yeah, th th those few corners are a little bit awkward. It, it does flow a lot better than the new version. And well, these uh, next corners, turn 9 and 10 in these cars, do feel very awkward. And this exit curb, you have to be so, so careful. Otherwise, you will spin the car around. And that will be the end of your day. So make sure not to do that. Under the Foster's Bridge, we go into the final sector. Now, this corner, again, is a lot sharper in these cars than you think. Now, this corner, I kept getting caught at. You have to take it so carefully as the car can easily understeer through there into the second to last corner now. Easy second gear, be careful on throttle and the final corner, you can pretty much plant it. These cars are pretty stable through there. Uh, and across the line, it looks like we're gonna be in ninth place for our first qualifying session, which is not too bad, but just a tiny bit worse than they did in real life. You see the, the qualifying results. Mika Hakkinen takes his first pole position of the season. The Ferraris are splitting the two McLarens apart. Coulthard down in fourth. You would have expected to maybe be a little bit higher. Uh, of course, in real life, the McLarens absolutely dominated uh, the qualifying here at Australia. They were, I think, around a second uh, quicker than Michael Schumacher. So this game uh, cutting down the gaps a little bit. Which is definitely going to make the championship a lot more interesting. Uh, but uh, Eddie Irvine is definitely higher than he should be in real life. And uh, Jean Alessi, our teammate, up in sixth place. So very, very good um, qualifying session for the Saubers. Uh, we're pretty much ahead of most of our rivals. And well, let's jump straight into the race weekend. No more.
more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at Albert Park, home of the Australian Grand Prix since 1996. And home to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. Its combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners make it a tricky track when it comes to overtakes. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. And uh, well, we sit in our grid position for our first race weekend of our Formula 1 career, and we're going to go with a one-stop. I believe that is what is going to be best around here. Uh, the hard tyres can pretty much last about half the race, so we will have to manage a little bit. Um, but uh, anyway, it's time to go racing as we wait for the five red lights to go out. We're going to try and get a good launch in our first race of the season, and it's lights out, and away we go. We get a decent start, but it's not fantastic. Lost a bit of ground to the cars ahead. We've been jumped by Fisichella, who you can see on our right. Now, we're going to try and gain that position back as we head into turn one. Have to be so, so careful not to run into anyone. And we survive our first corner of our Formula 1 career, which is always a good thing. And a lot better than some other drivers have managed over the past few years. Cough, cough, mad, uh, mad as a pin, <laughs> excuse me, as Villeneuve there. Uh, going quite slowly. We just have to check up a little bit. And coming towards the end of the first sector now, we've survived gain that position back on Vizicella. And just making sure we keep in tabs with the cars ahead of us now. See if we can pick anyone off behind us. Vizicella getting a decent run on us. As um, yeah, Holding P9 on our first sap isn't too bad. We would have hoped to gain a couple positions into this corner. Not really easy to overtake into here at all. Running a bit wide onto the curb there. Not getting a fantastic exit. And uh, maybe put a bit too much fuel in the car. It's definitely feeling like a boat at the minute. And especially through these next few corners. Just understeer heaven as we go through here. Just losing a bit more time on Villeneuve. Fisichella might be able to get a run on us here. This will be pretty bad if we lose this place. But we're just about to keep it. But we go deep. And he's going to overtake us as we get it all wrong on the exit. And just about managed to keep the car on the road. But that's lost us a couple places. We're down to 14th now. Gain a couple back as Barrichello gets it all wrong there. And we gain two places there up to 11th. Verts trying to overtake us now. And we slot into 11th place behind Schumacher. And wow, that was a very, very chaotic first lap for our Formula 1 career. But we survived and uh, that's what matters and uh, I think something might have happened further behind and there is there is a safety car and something's definitely happened towards the back of the field here is what happened running on board with one of the Tyrrells now and you could just see there that's uh, one of the Minardis and I think an Arrow's coming together they are both definitely out of the race this is on board with I think Jenny and yeah just taps uh, his teammate I think and then the Arrow's is just an innocent bystander and uh, while all this was happening, this is when the safety car came out. And that's Frentzen, who's run straight into the safety car. And wow, that's something you do not see very often, especially from the AI. He just ran straight into the safety car. Um, very, very awkward one there from Frentzen. But um, we're going to get underway here again in Australia. As we head round the final corner, let's hope we can get a good jump on the rest of the cars in front and behind us. It's uh, decent. Uh, we've got Barrichello all up our shelf, but I think we're going to hold on to it very nicely. And Schumacher is still in front of us. We're going to try and overtake him at some point. And, well, here's hoping that uh, we can uh, make a good move on him as we head round the outside into this hairpin. Fisichella and Hill. Oh, we get it very squirrely on the exit there. And we jump ahead of Ralph. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing it on his brother uh, sometime this season or maybe even next season. Uh, but uh, that's very wishful thinking, isn't it? But now we've got Fisichella and Damon Hill up in front of us. This is basically the two teams we're going to be battling with for the most part of this season. And uh, we get the slipstream on Fisichella, but Fisichella's got the slipstream on Hill. They do not fight into this next corner. We have to be... Super, super careful to not to run into either of them. 
And well, for now, I don't really think there's much we're going to do. But actually, it's given us an opportunity. Can we go three wide into turn nine? That's going to be interesting. Uh, Hill manages to escape, but Fizikella's onto our right. And we just about managed to jump ahead of him, but he still kept a nose up the inside. Is he going to go for a move into this next corner on us? No, he doesn't. He's still trying to poke it, though. And uh, I think something might have happened to him, actually. He's lost about a second there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what's happened to Fizikella there. He tried to go for a move. I don't know if uh, he's uh, got damage or something, but something has definitely happened to Fizikella. As there's yellow flags. Uh, I'm not sure if that is Fizikella or someone else. And um, I think it is Fizikella. There's another safety car. This is our second safety car of the day. And you can see there Fizikella. Well, that's just Renault reliability, isn't it? Not really too much else to say there, and uh, yeah, un unfortunate there for the Benetton driver. And uh, well, we're going to come into the pit lane for our first and hopefully only stop. Just about get it stopped on the marks. And uh, unfortunately, I think our teammate has decided to do the same as us, so we're going to get held up here. And well, this is not ideal at all. We've lost, uh, well, already a couple of positions from doing this. And I don't blame Herbert for coming in at the same time as me. Kind of makes sense for everyone to come in now and uh, get your one stop over with. But we're down in 15th. We are second from last. We've got a lot of work to do now. We've only got David Coulthard behind us. So we're basically as good as last because he will just instantly overtake us at some point. But now we eagerly wait the restart. Got Eddie Irvine in front of us and Hakkinen as well. Villeneuve. <laughs> we're just surrounded by... All the cars we shouldn't be surrounded by, but um, we're just going to have to live with it. Get a horrible exit. These hard tyres really are not working well at all. And, well, we're going to watch David Coulthard soar past us, and there's really nothing we can do. He goes a bit deep, and uh, as much as we want to fight it, unfortunately, you can just see there the power of that McLaren Mercedes just pulling away. And, well, there's not really much else we can do. Got uh, a bit of a battle up front as well. Uh, Verstappen getting swarmed by the rest of these guys, but it just started to settle down a little bit. But um, now we are on the back of Coulthard, and he is trying to get past Verstappen as we go past Verstappen as well. He's got a penalty for something that seems to have happened earlier on in the race, but we breeze our way past the Tyrrell. I mean, the, the, the Tyrrell genuinely in 1998 had just the worst straight line speed in the world, <laughs> but... Here we go. Oh, God, this pack's getting awfully close. And it's his teammate, Ricardo Rosset, who we're trying to squeeze past. We actually get past Hakkinen in the process. We go past Rosset. And Villeneuve's being swarmed. There's Salo as well. Coulthard, this bunched up field from that safety car has really messed things up. You've got back markers who are in the points when they really shouldn't be. And then you've got the likes of me and the front runners trying to get back past again. It's causing chaos as we finally get past the beautiful black arrows of Mika Salo. I mean, that car genuinely is absolutely gorgeous. I know people are like, oh, but the black cars nowadays look terrible. Yeah, that's because it's bare carbon fiber. Jet black looks great. And that arrows is really proving why there is. Here is another back marker. This is Shinji Nakano just getting overtaken by myself and Hakkinen. As we just follow Hakkinen on through. Nakano actually tries to come back at us, but I mean, yeah, nah, 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 mate, that's never going to happen, is it? And we're up into 10th. We're back into the points as Hakkinen up ahead has, um, of course, some good pace. We've uh, gained a couple of positions for people going into the pits. There's uh, Karoff in the... Oh, that's our teammate. That's John Lacey. And that is Villeneuve running into the back of him as well. We've got our third safety car of the day. And this is what happened to my teammate. And a slight tap from, I think that was Coulthard. Uh, it was one of the McLarens, and then there's Villeneuve just running into the back of him. I think Villeneuve's got away with it. Uh, he's gone super deep into turn one, and then, yeah, just runs straight into him. But, yeah, unfortunate. But, so, uh, we're actually going to come in again, because we've got a nice gap behind. And, um, well, there's only about 13 laps to go. And once we get underway again, it will only be about 12, 11, 10 laps to go. So... Put on some fresh mediums. Uh, we'll lose maybe a place or two. But it would give us some great pace because those hards going all the way to the end are just going to be super, super slow. So why not? Let's go for, for something bold in our first race and uh, let's hope that it works. We've got 
Fisichella in front of us, who we definitely should be faster than on these fresh tyres. We've got Rossett, who, I mean, if we had a puncher, we'd probably be quicker than. But here we go then. The third safety car restart of today is absolute chaos. Uh, Australia does uh, always seem to be a bit chaotic, actually. It's uh, fairly underrated as Fisichella then not getting the best starts. And we nearly go for a move, but don't actually end up going for him. We've been hit out the back. We've been hit up the back by, I'm not 100% sure, that was Coulthard. David Coulthard has run into the back of us and is now out of the Australian Grand Prix. Look at this, he was so far back and then accelerates again in the middle of the corner. I have no idea what David was doing there. Don't know if his uh, chin there got in the way somehow, but yeah, he's out of it. And luckily it didn't cause another safety car somehow, so... It's green flag at the moment, and we can just carry on our merry way as we follow Fisichella through on Rossett, as once again, he has quite literally no straight line speed, and we're not going to go for the move of Fisichella yet, but we will plan our attack over the next few laps, as uh, Fisichella actually ended up coming into the pit, so we didn't end up having to do anything, and that's one of the Williams. I think it's uh, Villeneuve, the only remaining Williams in this race left. And he's made contact with the Jordan and down into turn three. That's uh, not going to do him any good there. And it's only a VSC this time, so we can just go back racing again. Uh, only a few corners later, actually. It was a very small one. But actually, with the medium tyres and also that VSC, it's given us a huge boost to try and catch back up to the top three, which realistically we should be nowhere near. But the, this tyre advantage, the fact that they've not pit since about lap 7 or 8. And look, we are gaining ahead of Mika Hakkinen onto the podium. But actually, we have if you see at the top left, Michael Schumacher has a 5 second time penalty. I'm not 100% sure what it's for. But, I mean, even if Hakkinen gets packed past us, which he actually is going to now... And uh, at this moment, I've just realised, well, there's no point fighting this, is there? I've got a huge gap behind. Well, what's the point fighting this? As long as I stay within five seconds of Schumacher, I'm going to be third. I definitely was not going to be able to overtake the two Ferraris. They were just too quick for me. And as you can see, in the end, we did end up losing time once these medium tyres had started to fade a little bit. But... Either way, we've just about managed to stay within five seconds of Michael Schumacher, who's going to win it on the track, but it's going to be Eddie Irvine to take the first win of the season. But we are going to finish P3 on our debut in Formula One. And the only other driver to do that, I believe, was also British, is Lewis Hamilton. So is that a sign of things to come? I hope so. But what an amazing day for Formula One. to set themselves apart today. Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today, and a stunning win for Ferrari. Well, what what a day. Um, that's absolutely incredible. Um, a P3 on our debut in Formula 1. That is amazing. It would have been better to have Jean scoring some points as well. He definitely would have finished really, really well. He was going really good. He was going much better than I was for most of that race. And, yeah, we just got very lucky with strategy. We definitely made the right call going on to those medium tyres. And, well, uh, again, I, I don't know what the penalty for Schumacher was, but it, it, it worked in our favour. And, wow. It, just wow. <laughs> that was an incredible day of racing. Three safety cars and one virtual safety car as well. As, as I said before, Australia really is an underrated track for, for chaos. It uh, happened last year uh, with 2023 as well in, you know, 
considering how bad of a season that was. Yeah. <laughs> but I was also just like to say that, uh, yeah, sorry I've been gone for so long, but um, yeah, obviously with the save file corrupting, I uh, had some wheel issues getting this game working again. Um, it's just a lot of issues, uh, some uh, other issues as well that I won't go into, but I'd like to say I'm back. And uh, depending on how well this video does, obviously I will continue this series and hopefully you guys enjoyed and we can hit the ground running again. And I also think I've got Malaysia and Hockenheim working for this season as well. So that should be good. But anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure being back for you guys. And uh, well, hopefully if this does well, I'll see you guys next time.